My name is Sunny Kang. I'm senior counsel at a privacy preserving cryptography company called Infer. Okay. So a year ago, I was scrolling on LinkedIn when I saw a post about artificial intelligence being used as a social credit system in China, and the system depicts a black box algorithm being deployed to monitor citizens and to import social control without any transparency. Obviously, this is a very dystopian use of AI, which is why it's one of the few instances where the media covers the effect of government-deployed automation. But what struck me the most was a comment that I saw from my colleague underneath, which said, thank God in the EU we have the GDPR. They were referring to the myriad of provisions in the GDPR under Article 22, which places limits on automated decision making and safeguards against algorithmic profiling. It's true that the GDPR is a pioneer in AI regulation, but currently, its impact on public sector algorithms hasn't been examined as closely, which is why I did my research, um, because the potential for these tools to abrogate constitutional guarantees and administrative rights in the EU is just as potent, and I found that the GDPR does provide latitude and discretion for member states to authorize government-deployed algorithms, and public authorities can benefit from broadly worded derogations to the prohibition on automated decision-making and circumvent uh, rights to human intervention and the right to contest the decision by enacting national legislation that sanctions it. The GDPR underwent thousands of amendments. Notwithstanding its global preeminence as a landmark data protection law, it's still a product of years of political and institutional bargaining and compromises made amongst EU stakeholders. So my first question was to track these changes to assess how policymakers and stakeholders address the specific risk of administrative regulation by algorithm. And I found that although these regulations are meant to apply to both private and public sectors, profiling by automated processing has grounds for legitimacy in certain public functions, especially in identifying fraud and tax noncompliance. This policy left room for agencies to deploy automated risk assessments insofar as these profiling techniques merely act as a measurement tool for human decision making, but it doesn't define uh, the threshold of what a measurement tool is. The resulting provisions of the GDPR show a deliberate conferral of discretion to public authorities to augment enforcement tasks with algorithms. This intent is affirmed by the legislative history of Article 22, which shows a significant relaxation of the draft proposal in 2012 to fit the needs of public authorities. Originally, the GDPR proposed a blanket restriction on the automated processing of special category data, which is data revealing ethnicity, political opinions, biometrics, and sexual orientation. However, Article 22.4 was amended in the final draft to allow such automated processing on the basis of number one, consent, and number two, if it's necessary in the public interest as defined in EU or member state laws. So what does this mean? If legislation authorizes automation as an official exercise of public authority in the public interest, it means that data subject rights for human intervention and the right to challenge the outcome most likely would not apply. And this was a deliberate design, as I've seen in different stakeholder um, documents that influence the GDPR. It was a deliberate design to balance the interests of data protection with the growing demand for algorithms in the regulatory toolbox. And this was so in order to facilitate uh, interagency data flows, sensitive data processing, and regulatory reporting to fuel the predictive power of algorithms um, in the enforcement tools. So in order to do this, the GDPR decisively surrenders to the procedural autonomy of member states that authorize these practices. 
This deference reflects the growing acceptance and demand for algorithms in governance and regulatory toolboxes, and it's because emerging technologies that can help public authorities operate efficiently and keep in pace with the advances of the private sector to regulate them appropriately was considered to be a priority that warrants a degree of self-determination from the GDPR. So as you can see, you can see all of these examples of AI that's already ubiquitous in governance. And with the appropriate safeguards, this kind of big data utility can be necessary and beneficial. Um, and there's already various modes of machine learning in AI that are already implemented or being planned to implement across the sectors, such as monitoring compliance with tax and customs regulations, enabling network analysis for anti-money laundering, financial intelligence sharing, natural language processing of trade disclosures for securities and market regulations, and detecting and combating market collusion. So given these public benefits, why can this pose a problem? Because firstly, as it currently stands, the GDPR doesn't define minimum legislative safeguards for member states for the ethical operation and accountability for public sector AI. Secondly, legitimate aim, necessity in public interest, proportionality may be interpreted inconsistently across member states. And if governments procure AI from a private vendor and contractors, um, they might be instituting a decision-making system that can never be explained to citizens because of the proprietary nature of the technology itself. And without transparency, individuals have no recourse to judicial decisions and judicial review. So, since public authorities with legislative approval can process special category data, it's a critical omission that the GDPR doesn't establish safeguards against the disparate impact of data in public system AI. So specific consideration of protective uh, categories or proxies thereof can create unequal distributions of risks such as false positives, perpetuate categorically different treatment of groups, and replicate bias in the predictive model. And targeted enforcement by giving deterministic weight to a protected attribute can also run afoul of general standards of fairness in machine learning, such as anti-classification and classification parity. And this presents a serious constitutional question on the permissible limits of algorithmic governance. And yet, these open questions um, haven't been met with substantive answers in democratic discourse. And in most cases, public authorities don't seek public comment from civil society before experimenting with algorithmic tools and using a regulatory sandbox. Common applications of AI in government that already exist right now, monitoring, filtering, consumer complaints, and directing enforcement haven't undergone a significant ethical examination from an interdisciplinary standpoint, nor has there been a referendum on the intersectional impact of these technologies. AI-assisted decisions have a likeness to human judgment, which can insulate automated decisions from judicial review and due process. And even when there is a human in the loop, it's really hard to quantify how the observance of algorithmic predictions can result in a de facto delegation of discretionary power or when it consequentially impacts regulatory action. And these obscurities in modern governance can undermine procedural regularity and the standards of reasonableness in agency action. Thank you.